Good morning, everybody. Lee Brower here, and happy Meaningful Monday to you. I am grateful to be here, and I am glad to be here. You know, each week is rich with some wonderful, exciting memories, learnings, the things that go on, and some tough points as well. Even the tough points are good for learning, but this last week was replete with both. And uh, I'm going to focus in on one thing, and that is, what is a hero? What is a hero to you? And can you see the heroes in your life that surround you? You know, when we go through tough times, heroes show up. We may not always know who they are, but they do show up. And I'm so grateful for the tough times in my life that have allowed me to see heroes that I didn't really see before. I, um, in particular, this last week, remind me, one, the, the, some heroes that are very close to me are my siblings, my three brothers and my sister. And let me focus in on one of them right now, the brother that's just younger than me. And that's my brother, Sam. When I was growing up, Sam was under a different kind of pressure. My dad constantly, he was a perfectionist and he demanded perfection from all of us. And, um, and that had to be tough on the second son. Because I followed what my dad said for the most part. I was rebellious and I did cause trouble, but I did excel uh, in certain areas. And it probably put enormous pressure on my brother and forced him or tempted him to be able to go out and make decisions that were probably some poor choices on his part. As he grew, a challenge became addictions. And he used to, you know, that became a, a place where he would turn to and became a companion for him. And as he dealt with those addictions, he would actually get what I would term Mansoness, to the point that I actually prayed that he would die, that he would be taken from the earth before he hurt or maybe even killed somebody. My mom, on the other hand, to show you how strong her faith was, every week, she would on Thursday, she would pray that he would live. That's the difference between the two of us. When my brother was around 20 years old, his best friend was murdered. My brother swore he would catch him. My brother went some even tougher times, and then he himself actually was in a car accident where he was helping a friend move, and he was in the passenger seat, and they rolled down a cliff, and he broke his neck, the second vertebrae down, which is usually lethal. And the majority of times, it's going to paralyze you. And somehow, Sam survived that. And I, he was in a hospital in Reno, and I got him and got him to come up to where we had a, ran, a, a ranch up in Oregon. And he was still in his halo that supported the, the neck when we got him up there and started working with him. And we worked him hard. We worked him hard. Work on a ranch is hard work. But he also got his GED. He got his feet underneath him, and he went back to California, Became a eventually became a general contractor, married a young lady who was going through as, about as much trouble as Sam was initially, and then watched her turn around, and she turned him around, where they got religion in their lives. They moved to southern Utah and developed a general contractor's practice, a building practice that thrived. This passion, though, to find the killer stayed with him. And at age 40, he went back to school and he graduated cum laude in criminal science, went back to California, and that man is now serving time in prison for murder and will probably spend the rest of his life there. That's the tenacity of Sam. Now, Christopher Reeves, who you know is someone who also broke his neck, to find a hero as an ordinary individual who finds the strength to persevere and endure in spite of overwhelming obstacles. When I look at that, I think of my brother, and I also think of all my siblings, but in this case, thinking of my brother. Well, he went so far beyond that. He became a private investigator. He got hired by a Washington, Washington D.C. law firm to investigate a man who ultimately became this number two man on the most wanted list, Osama bin Laden was here and Warren Jeffs was right next to him. For his Warren Jeffs atrocities as a leader of a religious cult that believed in polygamy and believed in taking everybody's money and then doling it out and controlling the people. Well, as a result of that, as once he became most wanted, the FBI used Sam through this process, ultimately Sam was instrumental in his arrest and his conviction where he is now serving life in prison. Now, Sam then wrote a book called the, A Prophet's Prey, P-R-E-Y. That book 
And because of that book, Sam's been on every major talk show, television show, you know. I, and so here's this brother of mine that I used to pray would die. Well, let me just put it this way. My, my mom had more influence with God, I guess. She won. And here he has this wonderful, lovely family. He's got a lot of notoriety. And then Warren Howard and Imagine Films and Showtime have now produced with the award-winning director, Amy Berg, a movie called The Prophet's Prey. It was submitted to Sundance and was accepted as one of their top films and received wonderful reviews this last, just a couple of months ago. Had a premiere showing this last Wednesday in a theater called the Rose Wagner Theater in Salt Lake City and crammed, every seat was filled and over 300 people had to be turned away. And when he received a standing ovation, my heart was so full. I was so proud of him. And I learned a couple of things there. Not only about a hero, but I also learned about the definition of success as it relates to your family. You know, a religious leader, a great, great religious leader named David O. McKay once said, there's no success in this world that can compensate for failure in the home. And that really bothered me. And it bothered me because I didn't really understand what failure in the home meant. So it was left up to me to determine that. But it wasn't but a couple of years later that finally the clarification came. You haven't failed them until you've stopped loving them. And my mother and our family, we never stopped loving our brother. And to watch him grow and to watch him have this success and to still be actively involved in making a difference in people's lives where he's now creating a foundation to protect children around the world and throughout the United States and women from evil-minded organizations and groups. He's going to continue to make a difference. Now here's a hero who is an ordinary, who is an ordinary individual who finds the strength to persevere and endure in spite of overwhelming obstacles. I believe that surrounding each one of us, surrounding you, are many heroes that we just haven't seen yet. Look for them. Celebrate them. And I'm going to guess that many of you, based upon this definition, are heroes as well. Have a wonderful and a meaningful way, week. Have a wonderful and meaningful week. This is a great life. It's a great time to be alive. I'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.